There is none in MMA more polarizing than that of Sean Strickland. I'm honest, I try to be, you know, unless I'm trying to sleep with you. In a sport as turbulent as mixed martial arts, he stands unrivaled as the ultimate agent of chaos. Like, I would love to f cut somebody open and I'm not angry. Like, it just sounds nice. A loudmouth persona isn't anything new in this game, but to maintain it with a true air of authenticity is nigh impossible amongst a sea of pretenders. And with the entertainment on the mic comes the very same inside those eight cage walls. He's, so he's nuts. He's nuts. He's so out of he, his f mind. But that boy can fight. But the jovial nature is nothing more than a fragile mask to hide behind. Underneath a life rife with trauma and hardship and one that would leave Sean with one sole directive, to fight and relish the violence it brought. I never really like focus on the win, I just want to fight. But when the victory is granted, the check rolls in and the fight is over. Is there anything left behind besides a shell of a man raised for war? Or does humanity perhaps remain? This is the tragic tale of Sean Strickland. To be a seasoned professional fighter, one doesn't have to come from a turbulent upbringing, but it's no secret that Strickland's early years are what shaped him into the gladiator he is today. We are all the product of our environment. For Sean, an abusive father, both physically and mentally, meant a turbulent home life that would plant the psychological seeds for years to come. My father, abusive alcoholic, drank, you know, got a pills later on. Everything about him I hated. Yes. Everything about him I hated. I remember he said, like, I'm going to fucking kill you tonight. So he starts strangling her. So me being a little kid, I get up. And I, the only thing I could see is a guitar. I just fucking smack it up his head, grab the phone, call a cop, run down the hill. I would, I would walk down the street, you know, just with a knife or like a rock, hoping to kill somebody. And when I started training, I realized, man, like, you're just, you're just fucking angry. And I was like, fuck, man. Like, I just like, I don't hate anybody. Like, I don't fuck everyone's cool. The influences around him had led to the darkest of paths, but it would be through picking up the gloves of war that Sean would finally find his path and escape from the ties that bound him. From like the age of like, birth to i don't know fucking 14 15 i was like this fucking white trash like neo-nazi angry fucking kid so the moment i started fighting i was like man i don't want to be that fucking guy freedom had been found in fighting breaking down sean's walls and showing him what for the first time happiness had truly felt like I remember the first time in my life that I ever felt happiness. My mom brought me to an MMA gym and I got the shit kicked out of me. I remember walking out like, wow, this is what it feels like to be happy. Like, I've never fucking felt this, you know? It would become his outlook for everything in life. Personal relationships, inner demons, and every ranging emotion. All expelled by putting fist to chin. But this catharsis would always be temporary. And the coping mechanisms outside of the gym would over time cultivate a personality that, to put it simply, was outlandish. Oh, no, I don't have a foot fetish. I mean, have I sucked on a few toes here and there? Yeah, but I mean, it's more of just like, why not try some shit? You guys, this is my boy, Saudi. And we can all be happy that he's wearing a fucking cup today. So I recently just not became racist. It feels really good, you guys. I got a lot of friends now. Well on the path to future glory, Strickland's time in the gym had shaped him well, unearthing the natural fighting ability he had long possessed. And with nothing else to motivate him besides the art of war, his early success was a near certainty. A perfect 13-0 record from 2008 to 2013 would be enough for the UFC to come knocking. A long five-year road to get there, but for Sean himself, a journey built on a whole life of struggle. And thus began his new chapter under the sport's premier banner. And I hope I could come to the UFC, perform, win, and... Hope you guys will be seeing me around more often. Alternating between the welterweight and middleweight divisions, Sean's early UFC tenure would be a positive expedition, winning five of his first six. And although setbacks to very credible competition in Kamaru Usman and Zaleski Dos Santos would follow, Sean's endearing persona and ability had solidified him as a company mainstay. Amidst the array of verbal architects following the Conor McGregor era, it's easy to assume Strickland's persona was nothing more than one act of many, a means to cash in on a quick buck when the next contract rolls around. And that would be a fair assumption. The UFC was now firmly the entertainment business. And while Sean lent into the madness, no doubt, perhaps even a little too far, one thing was abundantly clear. He was real. To many fans of the fight game, that was enough to be on his side. Cultivating a personality as polarizing as him, his gun-toting patriotic persona was borderline stereotypical. But it worked, and that was all that mattered. Oh, that is so dope, dude. Bro, this is dope. I don't think these will fit. Love and... Oh. Kind of men, men don't wear mittens. <laughs> my actually, my snowboarding gloves are mittens. They're great. His breakout moment from contender to rising star would not be from his actions inside the cage, but of course due to those on the microphone. 
Fighting efforts had granted him a title eliminator against esteemed kickboxer Alex Proata and Pereira. And despite being one of the fiercest men in combat sports, Sean would not spend his efforts on mentally dismantling the Brazilian, rather the champion Israel Adesanya. I get this voice in my head, dude, and you see my press conferences. I get this voice in my head. Look at this grown ass man on TikTok. Maybe that's the problem, bro. And the you don't want this guy's a champion. Do something about you it. You don't want this guy's a Do champion. Do something about it then. Bro, any Do day. something about bro, it. Bro, I will walk outside with you right now. Right now, you want to get my number? Step. Come on. Oh. Sean may have looked downright ridiculous at times in those moments, but he had stolen the show in which he had no right being a part of. He was hanging with seasoned players, champions of every discipline, and although entertaining, the overarching narrative was that he was overlooking his opponent. A prediction that would go on to be proven very much true. Stand and just kickbox with this guy. Oh! That's, that's what I'm talking about. about. That's, it. that's oh, why. I'm that's why. That's why. Done it again. That's why. It was another loss on the record books, perhaps one long overdue. To lose in such humiliating fashion on the biggest stage is an outcome that could break a lesser man. But Sean was well equipped for the risks, and such a setback paled in comparison to the tribulations faced as a child. In defeat, he would remain classy. Well, that sucked. It, uh, you never want to be someone's highlight, but that's a game we play. You know, I tried to stand and bang with one of the best kickboxers. The, the part about it was, you know, during the round, I kept thinking, man, this is going to be an easy fight. And then halfway through, I got caught. So hats off to Alex. He's a f killer. Um, thank all my coaches. Saw we didn't get the win. Fans, thank you for supporting me. Uh, on to the next one. It's time to climb up the ladder again. And a second successive loss months later to Jared Cannonier would knock him down yet another peg. But it was another opportunity for learning, a chance for growth, and a chance to get back in the lab and hone his craft. Ability-wise, it was clear to see, even to the untrained eye, that on the feet, Sean excelled, boasting the highest average striking defense rate in the company at 65.4%. His Philly shell stance, molded by extreme couture's Eric Nixick, had cultivated him from a bloodthirsty wild man into a disciplined and determined contender. The losses hardly told a different story either. Anyone can get caught flush in MMA, especially by a killer in Alex Pereira, and the loss to Cannoneer remains highly debated amongst fans. Strickland had a point to prove, and his skills were the sole tools used to do so. The UFC, was it a mouth guard that they gave you guys to show how many shots you take? Something like that, yeah. He, he gets hit the least, yeah. and he spars, he spars the, most. the most. So he's like, his defense is so underappreciated. Yeah. He's like, it's like a weird, like, Philly shell that mm -hmm. he does. And then mm -hmm. he's lifting that, like, lead leg to, like, teep. Yep. And he's front kicking you with yeah. that lead leg. Yeah. And, that, and he's just always jabbing. You don't fucking see it. And then right. bop, bop. And then he's hitting you with the jab. But it fucking, it works for him. Sean's mental growth had also led him to not fall into one proper niche of the internet, rather his own entirely. One may say he'd been enveloped by the growing traditional manosphere mindset, but Strickland would reject those notions in the most appropriate way possible. Andrew Tate, you guys, there's so many better male role models to have, and he is the definition of trash. Sean was an anomaly on every possible front, and with a lack of any care for others' opinions of himself, his approach to life and the fight game was a much needed breath of fresh air. As turbulent as Sean's life was from past to present, one constant was his connection to the fans. Strickland acknowledged the part we as spectators have to play in keeping the sport alive. Whilst figures like Colby Covington named to take fire at anyone and everyone for theatrical purposes, Sean had made it a regular occurrence to appreciate those who at the crux of it all allowed his and so many others' careers to flourish. I am so grateful that you guys watch me because my life my bike everything i can have is because you guys can watch me man so i am so grateful for you guys allowing me to have a good life you guys are fucking awesome this man's awesome you guys you guys are awesome so again thank you guys for riding with me you degenerates strickland's activity in 2023 was telling of his love for the art of war less than a month after his last loss he would be back with the dismantling of the hot topic nasadini marvov in january before doing the very same to abu smagomedov in july very credible wins no doubt and they had put sean back in the running for that coveted chance and deserved or not on short notice strickland would eventually get what he had worked for a shot at the throne only 10 months after his damning knockout loss with Drikas Duplessis out of the title picture with injury, the American had stepped in to face the recrowned Israel Adesanya, who was coming fresh off a knockout loss over the man who had once felled Sean himself. The press conference was a surefire guarantee to be entertainment given the American's track record. Right. Let's fucking go! Let's fucking go! God damn, you guys are fucking...
Awesome. Come on, Izzy, give me something, bro. What the f When you argue with a fool, those who are watching can't tell who's who. Oh, there we go. Hey, you know what? You know what, man? The moment I post a video of me jerking off my f dog, they will, they will put some credibility to that. The fight itself had carried different expectations. With Adesanya's esteemed first middleweight reign, he came in as a 7-1 to one favorite, which for a title bout was far beyond the norm. In short, all except Sean and his inner circle thought he had little chance, but he was here. And the age-old adage of anything being possible in MMA can ring true at any moment. The challenger, Sean Grickland! The last defender, Adesanya! Adesanya will constantly give him this. Faints and fakes to try to back him up. Good shot by Adesanya. Sometimes I run my mouth so much that people forget that I know how to fight. It's heading back to the United States of America as the undisputed middleweight champion of the world. No! Oh, no! One of the sport's greatest ever upsets. It wasn't just a lucky KO, rather pure visceral domination. If only but for the shortest of moments, Sean's inner demons and struggles had been purged as the belt went round his waist. But claiming the ultimate prize was simply a secondary motive, the thing that so many had spent their lives chasing, to Strickland was nothing more than an afterthought. I was excited because I won, but this fucking belt, you know, means nothing. It means nothing. I already broke my belt. But I have a solution. Good as new. When chasing the ultimate goal, one must be watchful as to not descend into utter madness once they achieve it. In sport, that is no different. Take Tyson Fury's downfall upon winning the heavyweight throne as a cautionary tale. As the best in the world, the expectations change. Eyes are upon you more than ever, and those who once shunned and ignored now want even the smallest part of your newfound glories. But Strickland's lifestyle had remained largely the same, even with the monetary benefits of becoming a champ. But with his success, the arduous road taken to obtain it had finally begun to reveal the deepest of wounds. At the prime of his career, reaching the ultimate goal that no one thought he could truly accomplish, going from hated to loved by all. To most, it was a life already well lived, but the scars remained through it all, and at his highest, a single series of events was enough to unravel it, revealing the innocence of youth underneath. Like, I, I want mean? you to embrace that you're a better person than you were then. It seems like you kind of like fall back on this I'm a piece of shit thing. It's almost like you use that as like a little bit of a shield. shield. Yeah, fuck yeah. Yeah. You don't have to do that. The first press conference between the champ and challenger in Drickus Duplessis would mark the first crack in Sean's battle-worn skin. The American had all his career been willing to take and give the full force of any verbal skirmish. But when Drickus would go directly to the heart, it would all come flooding back. Whenever Drykus goes on there and like he jokes about that shit, right? It's like, dude, you have no idea. Oh, every childhood memory you have is gonna come back. The hard things that people don't understand, like trauma, you know? Yeah. Every single one, the one where you lie in bed at night when your dad thing, comes man. in and he beats the shit I out of you. I will take your fucking soul. You understand, you fucking pussy? <laughs> <laughs> we don't have to talk, man. I can just sit here with you for a minute. <laughs> Ugh, fuck, six seconds. Comeuppance, one might say. For all the morally grey antics Sean had dished out to everybody, to crack under the weight of someone else's words against you is hypocritical. But I, for one, would say that more than anything, it's a reaction birthed from tragedy and years of neglect.